so let's begin um now you all are probably i am sure that you all have been through these word classes uh basically uh, you must have been taught uh, 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 this um parts of speech in your school or colleges but that term is not um, uh, used anymore so we prefer that's an obsolete term it is used in uh, by a lot of people still but uh, word classes is uh, the terminology that is used now so um can you just stop and think how many word classes are there or parts of speech as you know so how many word classes are there can you uh, can you just recall some of them that you have already studied by now okay so if you are able to guess most of them then let's see the number of word classes that we have so uh, we uh, uh, we have nine word classes noun verb pronoun adjective adverb preposition conjunction interjection and articles now you again must be wondering that these are some of the things that you're familiar with um probably my aim is not to teach you the conventional rules and you know the information that has been already delivered to you during your school or college life i would just tell you something that i feel that you still are not aware of and uh, also when in the next week or um somewhere towards the end of your semester i um i give you a quiz an online quiz so i'll probably be including this topic um as part of your mcq so i hope that you uh, recall these word classes now even if so uh, many of you think that you know i already know this and i need to skip it please don't because some of the things that i'll be telling you about each of these word classes is something that you won't be familiar with i'm pretty much sure so let's begin and some of the things would be too basic as well so let's see um we all know that noun uh, initially people used to describe noun is a name of a person place animal or thing but that is again an obsolete definition and it's it, it doesn't include everything so um you 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 simply uh, understand that noun is a naming word it names uh, something okay and uh, uh, let's discuss uh, the types of the common types of nouns uh, the first is common noun again uh, okay so we all know that when you're use uh, when you're uh, referring to you know a class of a person or animals or place these are common nouns you are not actually referring to someone specific for instance if i'm saying all the girls now girls is a common noun i'm not referring to any specific girl here right so it is used for a group a common group of people or animals or places or if we say cities right so we are not referring to any specific city here right so this is a common noun or if we say countries it's a common noun um so anything that is generic that is general so you are referring to something a place or a or a group of people or uh, or maybe uh, animals but you're referring um to something that is general or, and not something that is specific so um this is what you must keep in mind as opposed to common noun proper noun always refers to a specific person a specific place a specific animal a specific thing or anything that is specific okay so for instance uh, i have seen in your exam copy that some of you have written your name with small letters so if for example your name is abdul rahman you are never going to use small letters for that right so it's always going to be capital a and capital r for rahman so don't make th those uh, kind of you know blunders similarly i am talking about something specific so a lot of people wrote you know english subject or english language um they use this word english and they wrote it with small e english is a specific subject it's a specific language so you'll always use capital word for a proper noun similarly some people in their paragraph writing refer to some countries um and uh, they wrote it with small letter again so if you're writing turkey it 
it's never going to be with small letter. Now, these are very, very basic things, but still subconsciously or because you are not used to writing, you, most of you people have committed the, these issues when they were, uh, when they, when you appeared for your midterm examination. And I, I was kind of, you know, um, really worried to think that you lack these basic understanding of language because now you have to move to an advanced level. I would have been teaching you as different types of essay writing right now and I would be uh, telling you about summary writing but I have to take out time to teach you these of some of the basic things because you have either not practiced that, you either did not learn that or maybe you just do it because you know you you don't pay attention to these things, but do not please um, get over of the common mistakes uh, in related to English language that you have internalized. Okay. Uh, so you see, is similarly specific am, animal. It's always going to be with a capital letter, right? Um, I hope that you all are know what is a collective noun used for uh, a, for a group of people or thing. For example, um, a team of player, um, um, a swarm of bees, uh, you know, so um, a pile, you know, the, the words that represent that something is in group. So a class of something. Right. So there are a list of collective nouns. You just Google it and you'll find a list. You'll find a list in front of you. And I also hope that in your school life, when you were in your primary or secondary classes, you must have um, you must have, you know, learned these uh, categories. OK, now um, abstract noun, we all know that it refers to feelings or ideas or qualities right? Something that is specific. So now you understand that why we just say that it's a naming word because it could name feelings, it could name ideas. So the definition that, you know, it's a name of a person, place, animal or thing that is obsolete, that doesn't include or account for every category, right? So that is the main reason. So uh, it refers to feelings and you all know that what feelings are. So honor, kindness. Um, okay, one more thing. See, there is a difference between adjective and noun. So if you say she is kind, now kindness is um, kind. Is, is she, you, are, you are telling someone's attribute. That is adjective. But if you say her kindness made her one uh, um, hearts of everyone or millions of hearts. So kindness is a noun. It's an abstract noun. But when you say someone is kind, you're basically referring to their attribute, their, their quality. So that is an adjective. So that it is also very important for you to differentiate between different word classes, especially noun and adjective. Right? Uh, because, uh, you know, a lot of people confuse, they cannot identify if it's a noun or it's an adjective. So um, you must have that clarity. Okay. Um, now we have gender for masculine and uh, women and male. We use the pronoun he or they and for feminine women, girls and female animals, she or they. And for inanimate things, uh, again, neutral, you are going to use neutral pronoun. Okay. Sometimes if you people uh, read books or novels, you uh, must have... Uh, um, come through, uh, you must have um, seen that uh, sometimes um, people uh, use feminine, uh, you know, pronoun for referring to ships or cars or countries. So in some context or by some people, these are considered, sometimes considered as feminine. So you must have seen that sometimes the writer is using the pronoun she for uh, referring to these inanimate things as well. So this happens if you have read um, and then we have countable noun, something that you can count, and uncountable noun, which are also known as non-count noun. And it's always written with either a or n. Now, what is the difference between a, n, and the is something that we'll be discussing later on when we reach to the slide of articles, because a lot of people, again, commit blunders when they're using article. So they, don't, so they don't know that whether they have to use the, some people use the in every other, with every other word, which is again, um, a kind of a, a blunder. So you need to understand that you cannot use each article in every context. There is a specific context in which those articles are used. 
Okay, so whenever you're referring to non-count nouns or uh, uncountable nouns, you normally um, uh, um, not used with um, a or n. For example, um, a bit of news, a grain of sand, a piece of advice. So um, you either use it with um, in this way, like for example, a bit of you news uh, because you cannot count news. A grain of sand because when you say sand, sand is a non-count non noun, you cannot count it. Uh, advice is a non-count noun, you cannot count it. So like this, okay? Now we have verbs and verb are the words that expresses action and this is not the only function of verbs sometimes they also help to make a statement uh, they help to complete a statement by linking it with uh, by linking the, by creating a link between subject and other parts of the sentence right so when there are there is one action verb you all know that drinking sleeping um, you know writing studying teaching we all know that right so action verb basically expresses mental or physical action so if you say he wrote the house that is the physical action but if you say he was learning or he was memorizing that is the mental action so any sort of action uh, that is a verb right but there are link verb now if i say um she's kind right so what is the verb in this sentence a lot of people would say there is no verb but this is not the case. Uh, there, are, there is a verb always, um, but there is no action going on. See, if I say she drinks coffee, now here the verb is very clear an activity we all can identify an action going on that is drinking, right? And coffee, uh, uh, adverbial, right? So subject, verb, adverb. So now, but when we say she's kind, here there is no action going on. There is no action verb, right? Some people would term is as a helping verb. So you cannot consider is as a helping verb uh, when there is no main verb. Okay, now this thing you may not have um, So in sentence, mein, she is kind. Kind is basically a link verb. That is linking the subject with the other part of the sentence. Okay, so this is a link verb. It is not a helping verb uh, or in this context, it can also be considered as a main verb because this is the only main verb in this sentence. This is the only verb in this sentence. Okay, but if I say uh, she is helping her mother. Now here we have a main verb and we have a helping verb. Because there is a main verb, that is why uh, another verb can be considered as a helping verb. For example, I'm saying she is helping her mother. Now, help with ing form is a main verb. It's an action verb. It's a main verb, right? So here is is not a link verb or not a main verb because we already have a main verb, help, helping. So here is is a helping verb. Okay, now you are getting confused because I have used helping and you know uh, the example as well. But let's see, she's writing a letter. Let's suppose she's writing a letter. Now, writing is an action verb. It's the main verb in this sentence and it's uh, with this ing form and um, uh, is is supporting this verb. So, is writing is the complete verb uh, part in the sentence, but because we have a main verb writing and is is supporting the main verb so here in this context is will be called a helping verb but if there is no main verb and i say um she is asleep right she is asleep uh, so now um is will be the main verb itself or a link verb or you can say mm, she is upset so she is a subject, uh, is is the main verb. And upset is, um, you're, you're telling about her, so you're modifying the subject, so it's an adjective or a compliment, right? So always know that in some context, when there is a main verb, is, would, is or has or have, uh, will be considered a helping verb. But sometimes there is no main verb. And in such sentences, there is no action verb. And in this sentences, is, 
um, or are, are, are themselves the main verb, right? For example, they are happy. So now R cannot be the helping verb. R is the main verb or it's the link verb. It's connecting the subject with the other part of the sentence that is happy and happy is a state or an adjective or a complement. Okay. Um, now we all know pronouns that, uh, you know, we use pronouns in place of a noun so that we avoid repetition. So consider a paragraph uh, in which you're saying Mary, um, uh, Mary likes to paint, Mary uh, uh, paints uh, really fine, Mary's drawing are really attractive, uh, Mary is an amazing painter. So you see, if you keep on repeating the noun or the subject or the name of the person, so it becomes, the writing becomes very, it, it, it appears very childish, immature, and um, it, it is very monotonous. So you, uh, in, for the purpose of avoiding this sort of repetition, you use pronoun in place of the noun, right? Now, you could be using it either for a person or a place or a thing or an idea, something that you have already referred to. So let's suppose in first part or in first sentence of a paragraph, you have referred, you have specifically named the person or the animal or the place you're talking about. For example, you're writing a paragraph on Karachi. So you have mentioned it, Karachi is a city of lights. And in the remaining part, you're telling more about Karachi. Now, because you have already introduced the noun, the, the proper noun Karachi, now, in the later part, you don't have to keep on repeating Karachi, Karachi, Karachi. You can simply use a pronoun. And obviously for Karachi, it's the name of the city. So you will use it, right? For a person, depending on the gender, you'll he use he or she. So um, basically, the idea is to avoid repetition. Now, these are the four basic categories of pronouns that, that you must be familiar with. Personal pronouns. I, me, mine, hers, ours, we. So these are personal pronouns. Now we have indefinite pronouns. So anybody has it? Anybody, everyone, everybody, another, someone, somebody. So you're not, again, again you're not um, uh, referring to someone specific. So these are known as indefinite pronouns, right? For example, everyone is absent today. Now it's a, it's a, um, and, and mostly it's considered um, singular. So everyone is absent today. Now everyone is indefinite pronoun. We are not referring to any, anything definite. Okay. Now we have demonstrative or these are also called demonstratives or demonstrative pronoun. This, that, those, these. Now, if we further categorize this, then uh, this and these are called as near demonstrative and that and those are known as far demonstratives so if you say this is a book this is my book now this uh, 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 this is a good book now this is a uh, near demonstrative if you say these are good books again near demonstrative that table is broken now that is a far demonstrative or uh, those papers are um, black. I mean, you know, I'm just giving an example. Then we have some interrogative pronouns. Those are question, uh, who, what, when, right? So you understand, I hope you have the basic understanding of these things and you remember these things. Okay, now we all know that um, uh, adjectives are the words that tell us more about the noun. For instance, a cute child, cute little child, uh, or a soft bed, or a tough man, or um, or an intelligent girl, uh, intelligent woman. You know, so they tell us more about the noun. They tell us the quality. They describe the noun. They they tell us, um, you know, more about the noun. Now they can be further classified into attributive adjectives and predicative adjectives. Now, attributive adjectives basically follow the noun they modify. For example, um, the black dog is barking. Now, here in this sentence, we all know dog is the noun and black is describing the dog. So, black is the adjective. So, when the adjective comes before the noun, um, um, 
before the noun they are describing that is attributive adjective on the other hand predicative adjective modifies the subject of the sentence for example the wall is purple the book is amazing the house is beautiful now here the noun is coming first and after the verb there is an adjective right but if i say a beautiful house right so that it would be attribute of adjective but there are few words that can only be used in one position for instance um you would always say she is asleep right she is asleep now she is the noun or a pronoun and asleep is the adjective you will never say an asleep woman because that is that is not correct so he, asleep will always be used in a predicative position you will never say an asleep woman right um or you will say he is still alive now he is the noun alive is an adjective or a complement but you never say an alive man right or she is alone so she again now and alone will come after the noun only in the predicative position you'll never say an alone girl right you can say a lonely woman but you will never say an alone girl right so alone or um, asleep or you know words like these these are the only appear in predicative position similarly there are few words that will be uh, that will always come in attributive position for instance a mere scratch yani mamuli si kharash theek hai to usko kehte hain a mere scratch ab aisa nahi hoga ki you say the scratch was mere theek hai so that would be wrong so mere can cannot be used in a predicative position mere adjective is always used in an attributive position ठीक है तो ये बेसिक एक अंडरस्टैंडिंग है आप हमेशा याद रखें कि एडजेक्टिव जो है वो आपको नाउन के बारे में उसके उसको एक्सपेंड करता है उसके के बारे में ठीक है एक और चीज जो राइटिंग के हवाले से बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है वो ये कि आपको प्लेसमेंट ऑफ एडजेक्टिव पता हो ठीक है तो अब कुछ लोग जो है अब एक सेंटेंस में अगर आपको दो से या तीन से ज्यादा एडजेक्टिव यूज करने हैं या एक से ज्यादा एडजेक्टिव यूज करना है तो कौन सा एडजेक्टिव पहले आएगा और कौन सा बाद में आएगा तो वो पूरा सेंटेंस गलत हो जाता है अगर आपकी प्लेसमेंट गलत है राइट सो दिस इज द प्लेसमेंट ऑफ एडजेक्टिव दिस इज द ऑर्डर दैट यू हैव टू फॉलो सो यूल बी रेफरिंग टू साइज देन द जनरल डिस्क्रिप्शन और जनरल डिस्क्रिप्शन और योर ओपिनियन द एज Uh, little uh, for uh, or the adjective little the shape the color the material origin purpose and then comes um, emotion adjective of personality now uh, actually these all adjectives are not definitely um, normally come in one sentence so um but maybe um uh, two of them or three of them you can you you would maybe you have to use more than um one adjective in a single sentence so what will be the order now can you just think of some example that you know in which you incorporate these uh, you know different adjectives and you place them in correct order for example okay i'll give you an example i love that really big old green and tea car that all that always that is always park at the end of the street now there are so many adjective really is an adjective big old green and tea now if you say really obviously the general description uh big um big is the size okay so really is uh, yeah that is an intensifier basically so that will come first then comes the size big then comes the age old then comes the color uh, green then comes the um, antique car right so uh, now again if you say my sister adopted a beautiful big white bulldog right so beautiful the general description big uh, the size the big the age or the adjective 
uh, in that way and white is the color and then comes the bulldog so similarly if you say the house is green and red uh, okay um then we have a wonderful old italian clock right so we have um wonderful the general description old and then we have origin italian and then we have um the noun that is clock right or you say an amazing new american movie so um, uh, amazing is a general description uh, then we have uh, uh, new that is the age and then we have american that is the origin so an amazing new american movie if you change the order and you say a new american amazing movie that is incorrect so please start practicing the order of adjectives too okay now we have adverbs and adverbs are pro, uh, basically the words that modify the verb phrase they if verb tells you about an action that is going on adverb tells you more about that action they basically modify that uh, verb right for example if you are saying adverbs of manner they come after the verb she writes now this is again a complete sentence she is the subject and writes is the verb so a sentence could be uh, considered complete if it, it if it has a subject and a verb so if you say she writes well now here writes is the verb and well is telling about the way she writes right so it is telling us up more about the verb so she writes well writes is a verb and well is an adverb right okay so similarly another example he gave her the money gave is the verb reluctantly so although he gave it but he was reluctant to give it right so you are telling the manner in which he has given her the money right or you say she sings really well so well is an adverb um or you say um or you say um she cooks well or you say um or you say she goes to gym reluctantly again reluctantly so that is telling you about the manner or in which the action has been performed okay um now adverbs of place if there is no object these verbs are placed after the verb for example he lives abroad now lives is the uh, verb and abroad is the adverb or he lives nearby right so lives again is a verb and nearby is an adverb so it's an adverb of place or adverb of time which are usually placed at the very beginning or at the very end of the clause you can either say eventually he came eventually any in the end and he came eventually so adverb of time right or you can say he woke up late right so late or um he woke up early so adverbs of time then we have okay now you might get confused between you know adverb of time or maybe degree or frequency so have try to have a very clear idea of the dif this difference between them right so if it's adverb of frequency it is placed after the simple sentences to be and before the simple tense of all other verb he is always on time for meals now the words like always or sometimes or rarely or frequently these are adverbs of frequency or at times you know words like these so if you say he is always on time is is the verb and always on time always is telling you the frequency 
or uh, if you say they sometimes stay up all night now stay up is a verb and sometimes is telling you that how frequent kitna frequency se wo ye kaam karte hain so sometimes is the adverb of frequency then we have adverbs of degree so um or you say okay now frequency now i have yet another example she barely visits her grand uh, grandparents now visits is a verb but before visits barely yani bahut hi kam so uh, mushkil se so barely is an adverb of frequency or um she hardly uh, completes her work on time which means bahut hi uh, no hardly is uh, not frequency in this sense but barely can be considered a frequency adverb of frequency now adverbs of degree basically they modifies an adjective or another adverb it is placed before the adjective or the ab adverb so if i say you are absolutely right which means you are 100% right so i'm telling you the degree to which you are right so that is known as adverb of degree i am always ready i am completely fine right i am totally shocked right so words like these are degree adverbs of degree i hope this this makes sense to you okay we all know that what does uh, what do prepositions do um we all know that a preposition introduces a noun or a pronoun or a phrase or clause functioning in the sentence as a noun so the word or the word group that basic that preposition introduces is its object so uh these are just the few example the book is on the table the spider crawls slowly along the railing the dog is hiding under the porch because it knows it will be punished for chewing up the new pair of shoes but this is the exhaustive list of preposition right so about above across after against along among around at before behind below beneath beside between beyond by down during except for from in into like of of on over past since through throughout to toward you know so this is the complete list and you must to know the correct usage or the correct placement or in which context each of them are used okay now um uh, you remember i taught you about the different types of sentence structure the simple uh, sentence the compound sentence and the com com complex sentence and the compound complex sentence and in that i told you about conjunctions so i would just try to you know uh, um, uh, reinforce that idea and by now i know that you already know the types of conjunction there are two main types of conjunction the coordinating conjunction and the, how you differentiate between the two of them that a coordinating conjunction would always join two independent sentences i am teaching my brother is sleeping now these two are independent sentences and i am going to connect two of them i am teaching and my brother is sleeping so because and is connecting two independent sentences it is a coordinating conjunction or if i say i will sleep after the class or i will make dinner now i will sleep after the class is also an independent sentence and i will make dinner or i'll cook dinner is also an independent sentence now if i connect both of this both of these sentences with or it's a coordinating conjunction right so you you need to know the correct placement the correct type of these uh, conjunctions so i will um, sleep after the class or i'll cook dinner but but the subordinating conjunction will always join two clauses one the dependent clause it will join the dependent clause with the independent one or the independent clause with the dependent one either order is correct for example although i was a bit lazy i manage to attend the class right now although is a subordinating conjunction although is making this sentence dependent although i was busy now this is a dependent clause it doesn't convey complete meaning until and unless there is a main independent clause attached to it 
right so subordinating conjunctions always join two clauses dependent and independent clauses so there are again numbers of examples like although because even though when whenever unless so there are many and this is an easier one if you read novels stories this is very common and uh, this is a word class interjection which is an exclamatory word and it expresses emotions right so wow look at the sunset goodness what a cute baby right so it basically there are uh, these are the words that expresses your feelings or your emotions that's it now here we are on adjectives now um, understand uh, sorry uh, articles now understanding the types of articles and the correct usage of this article is very important so articles are used to indicate whether the noun used in the sentence is general or specific and they are again classified into two types so a and an are indefinite article why because they indicate again something non specific when we are not referring to anything specific or an definite article is used to indicate something very specific for example if i say there is a cat under the table now here i have used two articles a and the now there is a cat now it's not something specific a cat any cat right under the table why because i have this one table in my room and obviously i'm referring to that table so i am referring to a specific table the table that is not placed anywhere or any table i am referring to the table that is there in my room so the as an is the article which is used to refer to something specific so you people use the unnecessarily in your writing you are not going to use the every time in every sentence right some of the people have even written the pakistan now obviously pakistan again we, i am going to show uh, discuss some of the rules pakistan is a country and it's the name of a specific country but you don't use the with the name of country until unless there is again an exception i'll be telling you that so when is the used please try to understand that when the group when the object or group of word is unique or considered to be unique so for referring to something you need so the earth the sea the stars etc right before a noun which has become definite as a result of being mentioned a second time okay now i gave you the example i just gave you the example there is there is a cat under a table right now i have referred to a cat now uh, there is a second sentence the cat is making a lot of noise now the cat why i am using the in the second sentence because i have already introduced a cat in the first sentence and now i am referring to the cat that is under the table so it has become specific so in the second sentence i'll use the uh, article the so yeah for example okay i'll explain again i am saying there is a cat under the table the cat is making a lot of noise now when i am using the in the second sentence i am referring to that specific cat that is there under the table so you understand for example um, my friend gave me a book to read last week my friend gave me a book last week now the book was amazing or the book was worth reading now a book she gave me a book i i am probably not naming that book now i am telling you more about the book the same book that my friend gave me so i said my friend gave me a book last week the book was amazing i am referring to the same book that my friend gave me i am telling you more about the same book so here the will be used right okay now it is also used before certain proper noun names of seas rivers group of island chains of mountain plural names of countries deserts for example the atlantic the netherlands the thames the sahara okay and also used before names consisting of adjective plus of for example the gulf of mexico 
now i said kids never use you don't write pakistan with the the pakistan is beautiful that is totally incorrect but obviously you say the united states of america why because this consists of an adjective and of united states united adjective states of is there and then comes the noun so in this context the is used the is also used before names consisting of adjective for example the arabian sea now sea is the noun and arabian is the adjective that is why the is used the arabian sea the highest street right it is also used before proper nouns consisting of adjective plus noun for instance it is it is used with the national gallery the tower of london right so pro before proper nouns consisting of adjective right now there are certain situation in which the is never used before names of places except for the places that i have already discussed so the karachi you are never going to say that it's incorrect before abstract nouns except when they are used in a particular sense so um for example abstract noun is love honesty or um, um or you know kindness but if you say um the love of my life now here i am to i am referring to the specific form of love right so here you can say the um uh, similarly the love that she has for those um, orphan children is is come you know it's it's um, remarkable or something like that so you're referring to something very specific okay or before names of meals for example the scots have porridge for the for breakfast not for the breakfast right or before names of ga games he plays golf he, he plays football he plays cricket not the cricket the football or the golf right it's incorrect before parts of body or articles of clothing then as they normally prefer a possessive adjective raise your right hand not raise the right hand raise your right hand he took off his coat not the coat so you prob probably use possessive adjective when you're referring to any part of your body or any article of clothing you don't use the in that context all right now that's it so um i hope concepts related to word class are clear you already had an idea it's you can consider is it as a kind of revision i will be including this topic in your mcq's formative assessment so see you in the next video thank you